good morning and a very warm welcome to everyone. We have changed seasons again and so isn't it great to be alive on this wonderful, beautiful fall morning. We have several announcements this morning. Michelle, are you here? For <laughs> Michelle and Pastor and Shelly, so come on up, Michelle. Okay. You know we're a well-oiled machine when she sees me barreling down and says, she must have something to announce. When you walked in, or since you've walked in, something has happened in the narthex. And we're getting our wonderful Wednesday sign up ready to go. Because you guys, next week starts Wonderful Wednesdays on October 5th on Wednesday night. And we have some excited off exciting offerings, and some of them are just still coming together. So we'll, we'll probably leave that up as we have additions come together. But first of all, we will be offering our meal. And our meal starts at 5.30. So you'll want to join us for that. It's a free will offering and a super easy button for your Wednesday night and a time of fellowship. You can come and eat and go or you can stay. We offer children's classes um, as well as nursery for littles up to fifth grade and we have youth class for middle school and high school. And then we have some adult classes as well. I do see that Jim is offering a self-esteem class. That's Shelly's husband, Pastor Jim. And um, I'm not sure what else all has come together that will be ready, so stay tuned for that. But we really also want to um, just invite if you otherwise eat alone or want an opportunity to get to know people in the church, Wednesday nights are a great opportunity for that. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. We'll be beginning our rehearsals, this sounds crazy, for Christmas, for our Christmas family service. We're going to be offering the children's program on Sunday, December 18th this year. So that... Um, hopefully allows more of our children to participate. Shelly will be starting those rehearsals at 6, and then our children's classes and all of the classes start at 6.30. So um, 5.30 meal, 6 o'clock children's um, music, 6.30 classes for all ages. If you have questions, um, come see us at the tables after service. Otherwise, we just really look forward to seeing you all sign up. Thank you. kind of fun, wasn't it? Um, rehearsals are Thursday night at 7 o'clock, and as you can see, we definitely have some bare chairs, and we could use some more altos, we could use some more basses, we could use some more sopranos, we could use some more tenors, in other words, we need you. So come and join us for choir. We have a great time, and there's some really great music that we're doing, so come and join us. Thanks. may have received a letter uh, within the last few days. If they haven't, they will be. Um, I don't want anyone to be surprised. Essentially, we have sent out uh, a notice to everybody uh, that, or at least I should say, all our inactive members of the church to let them know, fill them in on what's been going on, what's happening. And as a way of trying to get our records up to date, uh, giving them an opportunity to uh, decide what they want to do in regards to their membership. So they can continue to stay on, they can transfer, they can ask for help, we can help find them a church. If they uh, want to just withdraw, they can do that as well. 
And what you got to understand is we've got like 425 some people on the books as members. And we haven't seen 400 people in here in a long time. Uh, a lot of these folks have already moved on. Some have already, some have moved out of state or just in another area. Uh, but we want to clean those records up as we are making this move into the uh, Global Methodist Church. Uh, in regards to that, our, your membership, and this is also explained in there, uh, whatever your status is in the church right now, when we become Global United Methodist or Global Church, uh, your your status stays the same. All right. You don't, you don't have to do anything different. You don't have to uh, sign anything or do anything else. That's all been part of uh, the process. But for those who aren't here all the time or for those who have started attending elsewhere, uh, we just want to get them caught up on uh, what's going on. Now, for anybody else that's been a part of the process and they're not sure what they want to do or they know what they would like to do, we've also got a version of this in the newsletter, all right? And so if uh, somebody would like to uh, adjust their status with the church, they can click on the link in the newsletter and they can fill out a similar form, hit the send button, that'll go to the office and then uh, their membership would be uh, updated that way. And of course it includes those who, hey, I'd like to join. So just be aware of that, it's out there and about. And again, we did not send them out to everybody, but we did send them out to those uh, who have not been actively involved in the church uh, for some time. So be aware of that and thank you. So this is a day of announcements, I guess. We do have several others. Um, one, the open door class is changing where they will meet from whatever number it is to number one, which is the old Crusaders class. So the open door class will begin meeting in the classroom number one, the old Crusaders class. So I want to draw your attention to the back of the bulletin and if you're online, it's just down at the bottom that talks about the new ministry. I announced this last week, and I hope you are joining me in prayer for someone to feel the tap to say, oh God, is it you? Is it me that you are talking to? That to head this ministry up, and it doesn't have to be that you are the one that drive the people. We need someone, first of all, to say, yes, I will step forward and I will organize people and we will work on this ministry to, to take people to their appointments out of town. So read that. Please, please pray about it. Please continue to pray that we can find someone to head this up. Noodle time is coming as well. There's an announcement about that. You heard from dear Shelley. We, we desperately would love to see you on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. And so just always keep looking at the newsletter, at the bulletin to see what's going on. From time to time, check back at the back table as our wonderful Wednesdays begin. And if, like I think Michelle said, even... If you aren't coming to a class, if you're at home and eating alone and wanting to get to know people, just come and eat with us. It's, it's an enjoyable time. And then you might decide, yeah, I might be able to stay. This would be a good thing for me to do. So as you have noticed this week, the season of autumn is upon us. And I don't know about you, but I welcome autumn coming. But with that, we see all kinds of changes outside, but we know scripture talks about autumn. So hear this from the book of Deuteronomy. So if you faithfully obey the commands I'm giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain, your new wine, and olive oil. So let us show our love and obedience to God.
from worshiping this hymn this morning. Let's pray. Gracious and mighty God, we thank you once more for today and the opportunity to be together. We set our heart before you. You know the various things, Lord, that are on our mind, those things that uh, rest heavily upon our hearts. And so we just lean upon you and not our own understanding, trusting in you, loving you, and giving you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And if you would, let's stand as we uh, go to our first hymn this morning, Grace Greater Than Our Sins. 365 in the hymnal if you like that. We come now to a time of joys and concerns. And I know the word is kind of going around, but if you haven't heard, Larry Benson passed away last night. And so the, the good news is he's, he's with our Lord and Savior. Praise the Lord. Losses are very, very difficult and of course continue to Remember the family in this journey that they're on. For as many of us know, it's not an easy journey, but God will be with them and we can offer our support and so that they feel that we are with them as well. 
Mary Jo Bird and Laureen Mason have been dealing with COVID and they're doing okay. But please, for those I heard on the news that Knox County is still the hot spot for COVID. So I'm not sure how they know with so many doing home tests. And, but anyway, please be in prayer for those and maybe keep your distance. Ray and Anita K. Tromley are back home from Colonial and they are very, very pleased to be back home. Ray will soon be beginning chemo treatments. Mary Lou Ducharme had been home. She went to Good Samaritan Hospital. Now she is in Heritage Assisted Living in Evansville. So I'm sure this is an adjustment for her, so please remember her in your prayers. Todd Lane, which is Will and Judy Duell's son-in-law, is in critical care and they may put him in hospice soon. He's been dealing with lung issues. So please remember them on this journey that they didn't choose for him to take yet. Jean Davis, a gal that used to sit over here, she's one of our homebound, she's dealing with vertigo. And so for those of you that have had any sampling of that, you know what a challenge it is, so please remember her. Barbara Seitzinger has requested prayer for a friend, Derek, and he's having his third stint put in his heart in the last four days. Tempra Haynes's cousin, Roy Snyder, has kidney issues in hospice, is called in, and her sister has had her first radiation treatment, but now she has COVID. Sonia Moray, who used to go here, uh, request prayers for her special needs sister in Costa Rica and she's not able to be there and so it's very very difficult to have a sister that you cannot be around when she's having problems. Shelly Bittner's cousin Becky is in hospice so if you can remember Thank pardon? You. Jessica. Oh I'm so sorry. So Shelly's Cousin, is this in, where does she live? Florida. Florida. So please be with Shelly and her family as her cousin Becky has passed away and all of her family. Rosanna Stubblefield is asking for prayer for her brother, John McCoy. He is in Florida in the hospital seriously ill. Bob Johnson, Lynn's friend is going to a podiatrist. He's had hammer toes and he's having difficulty. So please be in prayer for him. Lynn Priesthoff, who used to be here before she moved to Princeton, is, continues to be in hospice. So as her and her son goes in, on this journey, please uh, remember them. And Dale Beal, it's Herschel Beal's brother. He's had angioplasty, but he's doing okay. And so please remember, remember them. And all of our, if you look at your bulletin, please don't forget to look at the bulletin. Remember the, the people on our long-term list and our shut-ins for, as you can kind of think about, being a shut-in and, and the days grow long. And so please maybe send them a card, but certainly lift them up in prayer. So as we go to our prayer time, the altar rail is always open. We will have a time of silent prayer, but our prayer list is long. And so please take some time out, not just today, but this week to pray for these people. For I know for all of us, life seems to be a challenge. Oh, Jim Bob, I forgot to mention, Jim is home. Is he doing okay? Oh, I, that's the trouble with going home. Yes, yes. But please continue to remember Jim and especially Patty in your prayers. Amen. Yeah, and, and for all of us. So as we go to a time in prayer, let's remember these people and let's open our hearts up to the Lord. Let us pray.
Lord God. Most Holy One, Creator of all things and Lord of the harvest. We are in a new season once again with autumn, autumn upon us. But we are constantly in new seasons of our lives, new births, new deaths, a change of circumstances, all is ever changing. You tell us in Ecclesiastes that there is a time for every season. We ask for your hand upon us in each of these seasons. Walk not only beside us, Lord God, but go before us, lighting our path. Forgive us, for our sins are many. You tell us to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. We desire just that, but we are weak. Give us the power that can only come from you. You tell us that we have the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Send us that power. Send your Holy Spirit to us, Lord, and revive us. Help us to be your people. Help us to forgive like you do and to love like you do. We ask for your hand upon those whose names we've spoken. Give them healing, give them strength, give them peace. But most of all, help them to know you as Lord and Savior. We pray for peace in the world. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. We pray that people's hearts are changed. Protect our armed services and our public servants. Help those who govern, govern with justice. Lead them and guide them. For we know that the problems here in America are numerous, but we thank you that we are here and we recognize the freedoms that we have that others don't. But the freedom that we celebrate most is the freedom from the bondage of sin that you give us when we claim you as our Lord and Savior. Help us to tell others of this freedom Remind us, O oh Lord God, when we are reminded of the words that Jesus spoke years ago when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Before we take the offering, um, I just want to share how touched Pastor and I were uh, last week when we celebrated his birthday. Um, it was just, wasn't it just fun? And the food, and the food. My mother said that looked like a taste of heaven because the tables just seemed to go on and on. Thank you all so very much for making his day so special. We love you and we appreciate you so much. There will be some individual thank you notes coming, but we just can't thank you enough. And I just, this was a good time to say it because we give thanks for you as we give thanks for the offering to come. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you and thank you. Well, I guess we're going to need this anyway. So let's prepare now to give unto the Lord of our gifts and tithes and offerings. And as we do, we're going to be singing, Lord, I want to be a Christian. Now, I'm getting over a uh, sore throat here, so that's why I am not singing, so I can still have something left to do the sermon with. So sing loud.
Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you for the wonderful bounty with which you have filled our lives. Bless and multiply, Lord, this offering to your service and to the building of your kingdom. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And if the children like to come on down here, I believe Dana's got a little something to share with you this morning. Good morning, good morning. So, we are in a new season, aren't we? The, se the autumnal equinox, that's what it's officially called, but I like fall, I love fall. Do you like fall? Um, what do you like yeah. about fall? <laughs> the leaves, yes, there's oh, one. Jumping in, jumping on yeah, what else do you like about fall? The weather, oh yes, I know, it's so good. And you think of something you like about fall? Hmm. Oh yeah, it's my birthday too, in fall, is in fall. So yeah, that may be why I grew up liking fall, you know. It's my birthday also in fall. Is it, is it? It's oh, October. Yeah, see mine's in October and mine's right between you two's, I think, something like that. So yes, yes, I was looking at that the other day. So something else that happens in the fall, and I know even if you live in town, you've probably been aware of the harvest. You know what I mean when I say the harvest? They're picking the crops, the, the corn. They've been picking crops for a while because I live out kind of in watermelon and cantaloupe country now, and they've been doing that for a long time. And then there's pumpkins, that are a pumpkin field. So they've been doing all kinds. But when we think of harvest season, we think of them t picking corn and beans, and boy, there's tractors out. And But I was looking at scriptures all through scripture. It talks about harvest. And it talks about the seasons changing. And this is one of the very comforting scriptures that I hear, that I read from Genesis. It's in Genesis. Do you know where Genesis is in the Bible? Um, it's the first book of the Bible. So this was early on that God said this. So this in the Old Testament? It's the Old Testament. This was after Noah, you know, that with Noah and where... God. Yeah, and the animals came, and so many people and animals died. And so this is what God said after that. In Genesis chapter 7, As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. So God was giving a promise to Noah and his family, and we're part of Noah's family. Did you know that? We are part of Noah's family. So he was assuring us there will always be summer and winter, day and night, and harvest season. And I was reading this article the other day that was here. Jeremiah, why don't you sit right beside me here? I want you to hear this. This was something neat. Because, see, this way I can just do this. Because you're my grandson, so I can do that. So I was reading something that was new to me. It's really, really neat to read articles that people wrote, and it's like, wow, this is a new thought, and it may not be to all these people out here. But it was talking about God's harvest. And it was telling me, telling us that we get a harvest from God. Because you, get, you could say you get a harvest, do you go and do your... Moms and dads buy watermelon or cantaloupe or all that. And did they plant it? Did they plant the, the things that they buy at the grocery store? They didn't plant it, but they're getting a harvest from someone else's harvest. 
Well, this article was saying we get God's harvest. So what on earth could that mean? What can, is that mean? We get God's harvest. This was a new thought for me, and it's like, well, I guess it shouldn't be. That Now, do you all go to school? So do you know that going to school could be considered God's harvest? You are getting God's harvest. And you may think, yeah, but I could do without school. I bet you when you get grown up, you'll be glad you went to school because, yeah, you're absolutely right. I use math all the time. But when you, whenever, all across the world, there are boys and girls that don't get to go to school. They don't get to go to school, and some of them start working when they're about your age. So that's a harvest from God. So what else could there be that would be, well, for the big people, it's their jobs. And we may not think, you know, there again, you may think, oh, my job. But yeah, God gives us work. And it refers to that all throughout the Bible, talking about work. But what about something else? What about the love that you get from your moms and dads? That's God's harvest. And we got to say, yeah, and say, thank you, God. Because, you know, how sad it makes us because we know some boys and girls don't have that. They don't have moms and dads that give us the love like you guys all are. So what else could you think? It's kind of a tough thought for you, but it's a good reminder that, oh, my gosh, this, the weather, just being able to live where there's the freedom that we have, all kinds of things are God's harvest. So what I want you to do when you're eating lunch today, who all is going to eat lunch? Are you going to eat lunch? I hope you're going to eat lunch. Yeah, we're going to all eat lunch. <laughs> when you eat lunch, I, this is what I want you to say. And I'm going to say the same thing to everyone that can hear me. When you eat lunch today, Say, thank you, God, for your harvest. So say that. Let's practice, okay? Ready? Thank you, God, for your harvest. For we eat lunch, and that's God's harvest. Because we didn't plant it. God did. God was the one that saw to everything. But he's letting us share in his harvest. And that's so, so neat. It's kind of just like saying, thank you, God, for everything that you're giving me. So now we're going to say a prayer. We're going to be quiet and say the prayer. So repeat after me. Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for all of the good things that you give us. Thank you for being Lord of the harvest. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Now you can go back to prayer and praise. And as the children are heading back here for their prayer and praise, why don't we get our praise on one more time? singing uh, I Need Thee Every Hour. And as you're able, let's stand and uh, join together. I Need Thee, 397 in the hymnal, on the screen.
Amen. And you may be seated. Good job, everybody. All right, Acts chapter 5, verse 12. The whole message, that's our topic today. Now, the apostles have been doing their thing, getting the uh, word of Christ out. And so here in uh, verse 12, they begin to say some of the things uh, about what has been going on. So, many signs and wonders were done among the people through the apostles. And they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the Lord great numbers of both men and women, so that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that Peter's shadow might fall upon some of them as he came by. A great number of people would also gather from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing the sick and those tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all cured. So here they are, Basically doing everything Jesus had taught them. Letting the people know that message of Christ. And they were, the, you know, they had the demonstrations of the power of God in their lives there. People were being healed. People were being restored. Unclean spirits cast out. So here's the thing you got to understand. Whenever the people of God are fulfilling God's will and they're doing the things they're supposed to and the power of God is being manifested, Satan takes note. It gets his attention. Because then he's going, uh-oh, there's more of these Christians, these followers of Jesus that are actually doing what they're supposed to. And so that's when he sets out to uh, put up walls against them, to come against them, to distract them, to destroy them, to uh, do anything he can to keep them from saying anything else. He wants to shut them down. Mind you, if uh, as a believer you're never really sharing the gospel, if you're just going about minding your own business, Satan's not going to bother you because you're not doing anything that's going to threaten his uh, idea of what the kingdom should look like. If we're not helping to advance the kingdom, he's not going to pay attention to us. And so he just lets us sit because nothing's happening. But it's where God's moving. That's when he wants to get involved. And so as this power of God is being demonstrated here, look what happens. Verse 17, then the high priest took action, he and all who were with him, that is the sect of Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in public prison. Well, that kind of bummer, right? doing what they're supposed to, and the first thing that happens, the people that are in charge of the church are telling them, no, you can't do that. Now, although the Sadducees, the Pharisees, and all of those that were in charge of the temple, although they are not Christian, the reality is they are still supposed to know God's word and God's will, and they have missed it. They've missed it, and they have turned themselves against God by persecuting those who do understand it. However, verse 19 tells us that, uh, so now they've been, they've been put in prison, but during the night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. And when they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak 
and went on with their teaching. Now think about that a minute. They've been out teaching, sharing the gospel, got arrested for it, put in prison. Angel of the Lord lets them loose and says, go out there, make sure you tell them the whole story of this life. Tell them everything. Don't leave anything out. So they just get out of prison in the middle of the night and the first thing they do the next morning is they go back into the temple in public and start declaring the gospel once more. How many of us might have thought differently? Hey, look, we got by with this once. Do we really want to, you know, tempt fate here? What if they come and arrest me again? But they went. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. Well, aren't they going to be in for a surprise? But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison, so they returned and reported. We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors, but when we opened them, we found no one inside. Don't want to be a guard on that day. <laughs> Don't want to be a guard. Because no, ma no matter what you tell them, you're going to be wrong. No matter what you say, you're in trouble. Now, when the captain of the temple and the chief, or yeah, now, okay, so verse 24, now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. And then someone arrived and announced, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. So even though they had authority, they were still concerned about what was going on. The people that were hearing the gospel, the people that were receiving this, the people that were seeing the hand of God in their lives, they were willing to stand up for what they heard. Now when they brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Yet here you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching, and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. Sounds like they're just feeling a little bit guilty, don't it? But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. See, there's the thing we got to remember too. What is it that God is calling us to do? What is it God is calling us to be? And we got to look at that from an individual to being a family, to being a community, to being a congregation. What is it that God wants us to be? And... Are we willing to be that no matter what the rest of the world or the rest of society might say? We must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of our answers raised up Jesus whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witness to these things. And so the Holy Spirit whom God has given uh, to those who obey him. We are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit that God has given to us. And when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. I love it when Peter just, you know, just kind of turns the screws on these guys every now and then. He tells them the truth. There's the thing. He tells them the truth, not because he's trying to be mean, but the reality is, here's what happened. And this is the result. Are we willing to be as bold to let people know? Look, this is the truth. This is the truth. 
what we find in the scripture. This is the truth. Sure, we can hem and haw around it all day long if we want to. We can bend it and whip it into a shape that's a little more pleasing to ourselves and to the ears of those we might want to share it with. But will it mean anything once we're done doing that? He told them the truth. Now, verse 33, when they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. Yeah, you tell the world the truth, guess what? There's a good chance they're not going to like it. They're not going to like it. Why won't they like it? They're not going to like it because it reminds us that we are sinners. It reminds us that we need to repent of our sins and sin no more. Folks don't like to be told that they've been sinning. Verse 34, but a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, respected by all the people, stood up and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. And then he said to them, fellow Israelites, consider carefully what you propose to do to these men. For some time ago, Thaddeus rose up claiming to be somebody and... A number of men, about 400, joined him. But he was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and disappeared. After him, Judas of the Galilean rose up at the time of the census and got people to follow him. He also perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. Because if this plan or this undertaking is of human origin, It will fail. So they've seen other teachers. They've seen other leaders. Those who were coming in uh, sharing one thing or another. That even though they had a, in one case, you know, up to 400 people following them. It was nothing but human led. And so it failed. But he's reminding them. If this is just being by, it's just led by humans, it's going to fail as well. We don't really have to do anything. There's no point in getting caught up in this if it's just of human origin. But he goes on there in the middle of his sentence, this in 38. Because if this plan is their undertaking and is of human origin, it will fail. But, verse 39 says, if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. And in that case, you may even be found fighting against God. And that's something definitely they want to avoid doing. Here was one smart man that's going, now wait a minute. What if God is in this? Do I want to... Do I want to fight against what God's doing? They were convinced by him then. And when they had called in the apostles, they had them flogged. So they weren't entirely convinced. (laughs) Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus. These guys are kind of stubborn. He had already told them not to do that, and that didn't stop them before. I don't know why they thought this was going to change anything. Do not speak in the name of Jesus, and they let them go. And as they left the council, they rejoiced that they were considered worthy. Now consider this. They uh, rejoiced because they were considered worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of the name. So... What's going on here is they're looking at this because we have been faithful to Jesus. We have been everything he wanted us to be in the world, even those that hated him has hated us. And so we know we're doing the right thing here. They realize that they're being hated because of that word that they have spoken that word that came from Christ. And it has nothing to do with anything else other than that they didn't like him and so they don't like those who come in his name. 
And so they considered an honor that they were uh, held up in the company of Jesus. And every day in the temple and at home, they did not cease to teach and proclaim Jesus as the Messiah. Every day, everywhere, at home or wherever, it didn't matter. You see, the thing here is, it's easy enough to teach and to share love, share care and kindness and charity. Anybody can do it. Everybody can do it. It's easy to share those things that make people feel good about themselves. It's easy to share and teach things that keep people pacified. Unfortunately, those things don't save souls. Those things do not save souls. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 1 through 5. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. Think about that. How much of that do we see today? They will accumulate for themselves teacher to suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and carry out your ministry fully. The whole message, the whole message is the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. It is the authority that is in his name. It is everything that he taught. It's everything that he lived. It's knowing there is a savior and there is a judge who will one day divide the sheep and the goats. The saved from those who will spend eternity where there is only weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's about facing up to our sin, confessing our sins, repenting of our sins, and then sinning no more. It's about asking Jesus to be the Lord of our lives and then living into that on a daily basis. It's about walking in the light of Christ. It's about being holy even as he is holy. It's about forgiving even as we are forgiven. Loving even as we are loved. It's about sharing all we've heard, all we've experienced, all we've ex received from God through Christ, the Holy Spirit, and from those he has sent before us. Let's go back to 2 Timothy again. Chapter 4, verse 2. Proclaim the message. Be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, and encourage with utmost patience in teaching. And as for you, be sober. This is verse 5. Enduring suffering, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, and carry out your ministry fully. To share the full gospel of Christ means we've got to tell them the whole thing. We just can't tell people the things that make them feel good about themselves. We can't just tell them those things that help them uh, feel warm and fuzzy. They also have to know that there is one way, one truth, one light, that is Christ. There's only one way to God that is through him. And that there is a judgment that will come. And either we know him and he knows us, or we're going to be going someplace very unpleasant for all eternity. It's there. We've got to be able to tell them the whole thing. But we've also got to live it as well. 
It's not about just having those things that make us feel good. There's plenty of good things in the scripture to remind us of, of God's love and his grace. But we also have to know he is a judge as well. The whole gospel has to be shared, has to be told. Let us pray. Gracious and mighty God, Lord, in our day-to-day -day life, there are opportunities. Opportunities to share Jesus, to share that whole gospel message. And Lord, we don't want to take any shortcuts in that opportunity. We want people to know all that Jesus did, all that he taught, all that he lived, and why he died and was raised from the dead. They need to know there's going to be a judgment day. We all need to know that we just can't live our life in a way that we, in any old way we want to. That God has set a precedent. God has set a standard. And that's the standard by which we need to live. And that's the standard we need to teach. And share. And live and to be the example. God is willing to forgive our sins. But we have to confess them. God is willing to lift us up. But we've got to let go of those things that we've held on to that are part of the world or part of earthly desire. The whole gospel message has to be told. So Lord, forgive us where we have fallen short and help us this day, this week, and every week to live into that whole gospel message, to embrace all of it, and to take every opportunity you provide to share it. In Jesus' holy name, we praise you and we thank you, Lord, for the lives that will be changed when they hear that message. Share it in love, share it in grace shared even as you shared it with us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And so now let us stand and join together in our final hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds, as you are able, please.
Now may God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless and keep you now and forevermore. Amen and amen.